Hello, and welcome to the Private Practice Owners Podcast. I'm your host, Adam Robin, and today we've got our client of the month, Mr. Kenny Holder. For those that remember um, a couple podcast episodes ago, we're going to start doing a series where once a month we interview one of our clients, and we're just going to learn about them. Uh, what I've recognized through doing some of this over the last few years is everybody wins a little differently. We just interviewed Sam Jackson and he's got his story and he's winning in his way. And today we're going to talk to Kenny and he's winning, but he's using his own Kenny sauce to, to, to move the needle in his business and make progress in his practice. So I want to introduce you to Kenny. What's up, man? How are you? I'm good. How are you, Adam? I'm doing good, brother. Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday. How's your day today? It's been good. It's been busy, but that's a good thing. Yeah, I've been busy. What what kind of stuff you been busy doing? Um, well, today I have been working on a lot of we're still trying to get a lot of policy and stuff in place, changing some things up. Um more kind of guidance for our PTs and kind of working on the way we change some of our billing up. So I've worked on most of that today. It's awesome. You know, what I recognize whenever you say that is you're working on the business. Yeah. That's kind of what it's, I've gotten a lot more time to do that. Yeah. So you kind of start, it's cool because you can start, you play more of the CEO role, right? Like you got like actually like identify the challenges that are in your business and, and move people in the right places solve the right problems so that you can set your team free to help you grow the business. That's the goal. That's the goal. Tell me, um, yeah, if you don't mind, just tell me a little bit about you. I'd love to hear just a little bit about you and your family, where you're from, where you live. Um, and then if you want to go into, tell me a little more about, you know, why you got into private practice and what, what, what what's really important to you about being a, a business owner these days? So yeah. tell me about you. So I am from Conway, Arkansas, which is in central Arkansas. Um, I've been here since college. So that's been about 15 years now. Um, I have a wife and two boys that are young. Um, got into practice. We started in 2013 in a small town here in central Arkansas, um, just working by myself and then eventually expanded in 2019, opened up a second clinic, um, kind of got into private practice. A lot of it was, I didn't really like corporate, the corporate world. Um, I kind of wanted to do my own thing and make my own rules per se. And then you kind of realize that you're still at the mercy of other people, even though you work for yourself. Mm -hmm. um, but the, you know, I kind of went into PT school with the goal of owning my own practice. So it's always been, it was always something that I wanted to do. Um, and then eventually my goal was to, Kind of step out of treatment by the time I was about 50. So I was planning on treating patients till I was 50. And my kind of goal, you know, retirement goals were I could just step back and run a practice and um, kind of work on retirement from there. Um, but we've been steady at it for since 2013. And now the goal is, is to keep expanding and open more practices. Love it. I'd love to, you, you said you don't like corporate. Tell me what, what you didn't like about corporate. I did a small stint in a hospital in a corporate system. And it was, um, I guess a lot of what I didn't like was the nitpicky rules that didn't really matter in our day-to-day -day operations was my biggest, you know, and just you had to jump through hoops to get anything done or approved or this or that. And, and a lot less flexibility. Mm. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. It's different whenever you have a small practice and it's owned by PTs, ran by PTs and everything's kind of looked through the lens of like 
being a PT. Yeah, yeah. definitely. It's, uh, yeah, I think people appreciate that. I've had employees now that are, you know, they're like, well, the good thing about here is like, you're a PT. Like, you're not trying to tell me what to do through someone else's eyes. Like, mm-hmm. you understand what it's like. So. Got it. <clears throat> Got it. The other thing you mentioned is do my own thing. I, I, one thing about entrepreneurs is that we're not good employees. <laughs> No. We, we, I, uh, I tell people all the time, I follow all the rules except for the stupid ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, I couldn't imagine at this point stepping back into now, some days it'd be nice to go to work and go home, <laughs> not have to worry about it, but just stepping back into an employee role would be very difficult. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. I think it takes a little bit of, uh, you know, you kind of, you have to be a little bit of a, a rebel to be an entrepreneur. Um, I think that you have to be really, really solution oriented and too much restriction doesn't, we don't typically thrive when, when there's just too much restriction, when that, when that's bottled up, like we need to be free, we need to be creative. You know, that's just kind of the way that our brains work because we're good at, we're good at identifying solutions and it's hard to identify solutions whenever you're put in a box. Yes. Right. And so you opened your practice in 2013 and then 2019, you opened a second clinic. Uh-huh. And then, so how has, you know, up until let's say over the last, you know, from 2019 to 2024, have all your dreams come true or like how, how, how have things been? Uh, they've been good. So our first clinic, small town, it, um, you know, it's always kind of done its own thing. Like it's been easy. It was very easy. If I could open up 10 of those that were that easy, I would do it tomorrow. Um, clinic number two, more competition. Um, a lot, just, it's been a different, just, avenue trying to figure out you know we went from small town with no competition really didn't have to do a lot of marketing word of mouth spread really fast to actually having to focus more on okay how are we going to get this off the ground what's the plan going to be um we're going to actually have to learn how to market and how to do things differently Mm -hmm. you always relate it to in the small towns like that when you go to the grocery store, everyone that goes to a grocery store knows 80% of the people in that grocery store and they all talk to each other. When you get into larger places, you go to the grocery store and you're just trying to avoid anybody that you might know. Like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I, even the word of mouth stuff is harder to spread in a larger area than it is those small towns. Yeah. And so when we met, we, uh, I guess that's about a year ago or so, yep. you know, Tell us, tell me a little bit about like where you were at in your business then, like right when we met or just like, you know, leading up into that, to that. Um, I thought I had things together more than I did. Um, I didn't have any good, I didn't have real solid policy in place. I didn't have many procedures in place. Um, clinic number two was still struggling a little bit. Um, and I also knew that I was going to have to do something in order to get to where I needed, where I wanted to be with the two clinics that I have, as well as just expanding from there. Um, so, you know, I was looking to get out of treatment. I didn't really know what that looked like at the time. I didn't fully understand how to get there. And I also didn't understand what in the world I was going to do once I did get out. Mm. Um, and then, you know, I just I didn't have a good idea of like where things were going. Yeah. So it kind of started just listening to, you know, listening to podcasts and getting ideas from that. <clears throat> And then, uh, 
I think he reached out to me somehow, some way after joining the Facebook group, maybe. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I remember, I don't, I remember our, our first call, um, a little bit and, you know, I get on, I get on, you know, I get on those types of calls, you know, and, and I ask people all the time, like, Hey, what's your vision? Like, what do you want? What do you want to do? And some people, a lot of people will say like, Hey, if I just had like two or three therapists working for me, whew, that would be amazing. Like that would be, that would be fantastic. And what you said to me was, I'd like to open like five or six clinics. Yeah. And I was like, okay, <laughs> we got us a guy, you know what I mean? We got us a guy and not everybody has that vision, but it, it really does excite me whenever I hear that from, from other people. You know, I had one guy tell me, I want to go nationwide, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, okay, let's do it. You know what I mean? Like that's a mountain. So, uh, that's one thing that I remember from you. And if I can recall back, I remember you were tr treating like 40, 40 hours a week, at least, you know, you were, you were in <clears throat> care. Yeah, and pretty much. I think. You know, I was kind of in a transition of maybe getting a half a day off here and there, mm -hmm. but it was still a solid 36 hours a week, I think, that I was treating at that point. Yeah. And, and really didn't have the staff. I didn't have the staff not to. So let's talk about that because this is fun for me. <laughs> because I'm debriefing the last year with you and I'm remembering some of our calls and I don't, you remember like we had, we, had, we, we got stuck on recruiting for a while. For a while. Yes. Remember that? Yeah. So yeah. I can't find a PT. Yeah. We were stuck there for a good minute. Yeah. And, and you were, you know, that's typically you were kind of in that stage three is what we call like the evolving leader where it's like, You've got a business, you're, you've got referrals coming in the door, financially you're doing okay, systems are kind of like, the house isn't burning down, systems are there, but I'm having a hard time really flexing that leadership muscle and I'm having a hard time driving like referral, uh, um, recruiting, like getting people excited about coming to work with me. And whenever you solve those two problems, boom, you, you find yourself at a new capacity. So Let's talk about recruiting. Okay. Right? Let's talk about that because we we talked about recruiting for <laughs> several, several months. Right. So tell me what your tell me kind of like talk me through that journey. Talk to me about like why you felt like you were stuck with recruiting. Mm -hmm. And then what you feel. Well, let's just start there. Tell me why you felt like you were stuck with recruiting. Well, recruiting before was an indeed ad. And I didn't really know what else to do. I mean, you know, I knew like I can call people that I know, <clears throat> but, you know, my network really wasn't that big as far as PTs that I know. And most of the ones that I did know were either in practice for themselves or, you know, lived off. So <clears throat> my recruiting strategy was, you know, and I had on Indeed, and you just, I did not get anything from Indeed ads. Um, so I think our first step was working our way through that, you know, just getting through. You basically told me Indeed's not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, you need to expand your network and this and that. So um, it you know, it took a lot, it took time and it took quite a bit of effort um, and kind of learned that recruiting is a lot similar to marketing. That, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, you're just marketing yourself to a different group of people, but um, that, you know, it's the more places you touch, you're not going to hit one home run with an Indeed ad or a, you know, you might, but the chances of it are slim, but it's kind of a, you touch a lot of small points and it eventually comes together. Yeah. Hit some, Nathan said, likes to say, hit some singles, hit some singles. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, buddy. 
you know? Um, yeah. So there's a lot that we can unpack there and, you know, everybody kind of has a different viewpoint on how to, how to move the needle. But I, in my opinion, I think all the best uh, owners, people who can grow any business, they're, they're really good at recruiting and they're really good at marketing. Like those are the two skills that they're just really good at. And I think the first step, my opinion is the first step in the first introduction into those worlds is you gotta, you gotta do way more stuff. Like you gotta get way more volume, way more touch points, more phone calls, more text messages, more face to faces. You gotta get into the schools, all the schools, go to all the creative events. Like you just gotta get active. Yeah. That's the first, like, that's the first challenge. Right. And and once you normalize that level of activity, it's kind of like when you uh, you want to teach a kid to swim, throw them in the deep end. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. before you know it, they're like, okay, <laughs> I'm up, I'm up, right? And so, okay, okay, now we can worry about like, okay, let's make our strokes a little bit more better, and let's let's strategize the rest breaks. Like we can we can build strategy around it. But the first thing is like you just got to jump in the fire. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and I felt there was some hesitancy from you there. Like they were like, yeah, but I, I posted the job ad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, like you got to get way, but you got to get louder. You got to get. I'm changing busy. every 30 days. Like, yeah. You know, um, for us, I think like just reaching out enough was one of the big things. And then really when we got to, went to a system where we could send text messages. Like people responded to us a lot more through texting than they did through emails. Write this down guys. Um, Listen, write it down. So, and then you start talking to people. And even now that I've hired, I've got a list of two or three that I think I could call back. You're ready to go, huh? Yeah. I mean, I've, it's a, uh, you know, I've kind of got a little bit of a pipeline, if not a little, a lot more of a network of people that I can reach out to and touch base with. And, you know, you talk to a lot of people, it's kind of like, I guess it's like sales, right? Like you talk to a lot of people and you have people that tell you no, but the more people you talk to, you'll eventually have those that they like where you're going and, you know, they yep. commit to it. I love that, man. That's awesome. That's really cool. You jumped in there, you started figuring it out. You, and then you were like, oh, text messages are kind of working. Let me do more of that. And boom, there it was sitting yeah. there the whole time. It's been there for the last 10 years. You know, yeah. Yeah. you just had to find it. And so I remember, God, I remember when we got that. I was like, yes, let's go. Let's freaking go. And then, and then you, then we had to, then we had to decide like, okay, how do we close the deal? You remember that? Then we were like, now we started doing interviews and you had candidates who were like, yeah, well, I might not stick around. I want to, I might want to move off. You know, I'm not really sure what I want to do. Right. So then you had to like, it turned into not a lead generation issue. It yeah. turned into a sales. Hmm. I'm selling myself. I'm selling my culture. I'm selling who I am. And I'm, helping this person realize that maybe this is a good solution. So talk us through that. Like talk, how did you, how did you, what was your framework around that? Um, it was a lot of follow-up phone calls, a little bit of luck um, and really just trying to, I guess provide the opportunity and sell the idea of growth, right? Like this is where we're at. This is where we're going. And you know, there is, there is potential for opportunity here versus just going and finding a travel job and traveling. You know, you may make more money in the beginning, but at the end of the day, like 
you're actually setting some roots somewhere that has a future versus five years from now, you're just standing there, you know, like wondering what you're going to do next. And I think that said it more than anything. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. It sounds like you shared your vision. Yes. You ha- First of all, you had a vision. Yeah. You were, cl- you were clear on the vision. And you started getting more clear on like what your purpose was, what your values were, what you stood for, the type of who you were and the type of people you really wanted to work with and what you were being called to build. Yeah. I mean, that's something we've definitely gotten more solid on in the last year is a lot more purpose and value driven than, you know, than anything. And those are all leadership skills. That's why, that's why leadership is the bottleneck there. Right. Yeah. That's why that's exactly why, like, you don't need to focus on that if you're trying to get new patients in the door, right? Like that's not really like your big bottleneck. It's, it's important, but it's not the thing that you need to solve. Right. And so like, did I, did it, did I give you like a super secret formula to recruiting? No. I no. mean, it was- did, I, did, did I, did I automate anything for you? Did I like, did I like tell you like, oh yeah, all you got to do is out spend some money on Indeed and all your pro- Did I do any of that? No. 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 What happened was Kenny Holder changed and he decided and he elevated himself and he created a new possibility. And that's the thing that moved the needle. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> it's freaking awesome, man. And it's like, like I've always said, like, Good news is you're the bad news is you're the problem. <laughs> the good news is you're also the solution. Yeah. Right. And yeah. you will not create, you will not move the needle on recruiting until you become the person that you need to be to move the needle on recruiting. And once you were able to see yourself in that, in that role, you were able to show up in a much more powerful way. Yeah. And, yeah. You we know? got two PTs out of the deal. Yeah. So like, yeah. So <laughs> this knucklehead here, not only did he hire one, but you hired two. Yep. Two PTs. And you got people in the pipeline. Nuts. And I remember, I remember, uh, now we're getting into a little more recent conversations, right? I remember having the conversation of like, well, maybe I should just hire one. Right? Yeah. Let's talk through that, right? <laughs> I want to just hire one. Uh, but should I hire two, but I don't quite have the visits for two, right? All that stuff. Let's talk, let's talk through that. Like what, how did that come around? So, you know, we had in one clinic, like one office, we've been trying to hire PT for a year. I mean, we had an immediate need and it was now. Um, then I had, you know, through the recruiting efforts, I had ended up with two that were wanting to come to work. Um, so office two, we were kind of getting full, but not like, you know, still had some room, but I knew if we kept growing that I was going to need another PT. Um, and I didn't want that to be what kept us from getting, you know, from, from growth. Like, And I knew how hard it had been to hire the first one. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it ended up, we sat down and did the math on, hey, what's this, you know, what, what are the pros and the cons and, you know, what are the true costs of what it's going to take to hire the second guy and, so we just, I felt like it was, you know, we could get there that, you know, we could, um, we could get the, we could do what it took to get the business, to get him hired and busy. And, and that's been, I guess he started six weeks ago and I'm going to say we're 80% we're eighty percent of the way to getting his schedule full. Yeah, I remember at the conference in Clearwater, we were sitting on the on the rooftop thing, uh, yeah. the first day, and we we're having a couple beers, 
and and you were like, man, I'm stressed out. I, I've got these two PTs and I don't have the patients to see him. He's only treating like four patients a day. Like, oh my God. And it was just, it's so cool to see you overcome that. Yeah. I mean, we're already trying to figure out a PRN therapist right now. Like, mm -hmm. because if it keeps going, um, he'll be, he should be full within the next month to two months completely. So <laughs> you decided, you know, what I'm kind of hearing is as I'm thinking about your journey, it's like, pick your heart. Yeah. Do you want to stay stuck in treatment for the rest of your life and just do that? Or do you want to do the hard thing of like figuring out how to fill up this practice? Pick one. Yeah. And, and, and get, and, and, and be, you have the courage to go after what you really want. Yeah. Because what you're really doing is gambling on you. Right. Yeah. Do, do yeah. I, do I, if I give myself the space and I put these people in position and I go all in on fill this practice one-on-one, -on -one, can I pull it off? And you surrounded yourself with a great team. You went to the conference. We did a lot of brainstorming around how we could do that. You've got a coach and you went all in on it. And that's all you needed. And now yeah. look at you, you solved the problem, right? Now you're, yeah. and then once you fill this practice up, there's going to be, guess what? There's going to be a new problem. All right. And then we're going to have to solve that one. You know? Yeah. Well, you know, the good thing I'm down now to, um, kind of transitioning out of seeing my last few patients. Um, you know, I'm probably treating 10 hours a week. Mm -hmm. um, and over the next month or so, should be getting that down to... But what it's allowing me to do is I have the time and the ability to focus on those things without just running myself, you know, before it was five minutes here, 10 minutes there, you know, you might get 20 minutes and then you never could really get started on anything really well before it was time to go do something else. And then it's uh, when you have more time to spend and focus on the things that matter, the things happen a lot faster. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Yeah. I, there is no problem you can't solve. You just got to have the time. Yeah. You, just gotta have to have, you have to be committed to the process of stepping out of treatment, educating yourself. Right. Like you got to like get in the vault, study, study your yeah. numbers, play with it, figure it out. Talk about hiring, talk about recruiting. You got to hang out with some people who challenge the way that you think, either some type of mentor or coach. Yeah. And if you just commit to that, you will grow. You will get better every single day. And then your business will get better every day. You know, like, it's not, it's, it's, and that's a, it's a scary thing to trust when you haven't experienced that because we're just so used to like, I gotta, I gotta hustle. I gotta, I gotta get out there and I gotta pick up the wheelbarrow and I gotta feel like I gotta hustle. If I don't hustle, then we don't move. And it's really like, no, you got to evolve. Hustling is not going to get you there. You have to evolve, right? And once you evolve, then you'll move, you know? And it's just really cool to see you just level up, man. It's awesome. It's really exciting. It's like, it gives me a, a lot of purpose because it's like, it's really what I live for. Like, I live for that. Like, I love seeing people win. So that's awesome. Yeah, it's been a great journey so far. And I feel like it's just getting started. Um, <clears throat> you know, we still have plenty of things to work on, but now, you know, you've helped me get to the point of like, I have more, uh, I have more and more that I know what I'm going to do <laughs> whenever, mm -hmm. as I don't treat patients, like instead of, you know, I guess it's given me a lot more clarity in my role as an owner versus a therapist and you know my team can see it like there's been a change there um 
when you know they can see that you your visions can kind of start coming to reality um once you kind of do have the time to start making that happen and then they're more involved um you know, and through all the leadership training and stuff that we've done, even through that conference, like, you know, it's helped me get my team more involved in helping us get things done. And then they buy in more and it creates a, you know, just the atmosphere becomes better at that point, too. And then you can't lose. <clears throat> it's hard to lose when you got that, you know, when you got people just really committed to that. Um. So what type of advice would you give? So I, I talk to not just practice owners, but I talk to vendors, you know, digital marketing agencies, EMRs, and I network with a lot of those people and they they talk to their clients and they're all practice owners. And so it's not, this isn't just coming from me. This is coming from everybody in the industry who, who communicates with practice owners. They're all struggling. They're all struggling. They're all stuck in the business, burnout, not all of them, but a big majority of them. And why wouldn't they be? It's hard. Reimbursements are declining. It's hard to recruit. It's hard to market. There's a lot of fears and insecurities and I don't know what to do and a lot of that stuff. Like we've never been taught how to run a business in school, right? Yeah. So if you can kind of put yourself like the old Kenny back in the day before you are now, like. What type of advice would you give him or her if that person's st kind of stuck in their business? And like, what, what's the bullet points you'd give them? Well, A, I would have started coaching back whenever I had just started opening my practice up. Have you seen Zach Randolph's progress? <laughs> yes. The yeah. guy is freaking, <laughs> I'm jealous. <laughs> yeah. I mean. He, start, I he, he started with me like three months before his clinic. The guy. <laughs> It's unreal. So yeah, start coaching. Yeah. What else? That and you know, like Sam. I mean, Sam's killing it. You know, but um, I would have started coaching a lot sooner. Um, I would have definitely. So I spent probably the first. I don't know, seven years. Just, you know, like I knew I wanted to grow. I knew what I wanted to do, but it was just like, there was no real vision as to how to do it. You know, it was just treat patients. Let's try to get busier. We'll hire more therapists as we need to, but <laughs> there was no actual path on how we were going to get there. Mm -hmm. I think I would have, if I would have started that path a long time ago, then, you know, I'd probably be at five or six clinics by now anyways. Yeah. Um, I think I spent too much time spinning my wheels and just, you know, treat patients, do this, do that. And then not focusing on the actual business as a business it took me a long time to realize that like, this isn't just a therapy practice where I'm a, I don't want to have just a therapy practice where I treat patients and that's where it goes that, you know, there's going to have to be some effort made to create an actual business around this. Yeah. I remember thinking I'm just going to work my fingers to the bone until I have enough money and then I'll figure out what I'm going to do with it. Yeah. That was basically the business strategy. <laughs> and yeah. what happened was you just kept working and working and working and working and working and the money never quite came. <clears throat> yeah. And you just get stuck in that repetitive lie to yourself. Like it's like you're addicted to that thing. That's never going to come true. You know? Yeah. Um, and I spent a long time, like, I was scared to death to spend any money. Mm -hmm. You know, like, and it took a work and doing some things with a friend of mine, even on advertising and marketing. And, you know, he changed, he started to change my mindset on, like, all right, well, if you, if even if it costs you 10000 if you're going to make 15000 it's 
to an extra five thousand dollars you didn't have in the first place. Mm -hmm. So you know you're you start having some mindset shifts around that kind of thing, and then um, you just, I just kind of and then I think that was around the time I probably started listening to Nathan's podcast. And it really kind of started shifting me toward, you know, all right, I have to do something. I can't keep, I was so burnt out. Yeah. Um, I'm coming home now. I told my wife, like, man, I actually, I had a good day today. Isn't that fun? <laughs> like, <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Yeah. I tell people all the time, like the best Fulfillment lives whenever you can be, I cuss a little bit, y'all, when you can work your ass off, but still have so much fun, you know, like you're actually having fun. Yeah. Like the conversations are flowing. I'm clear on my vision. I feel good about my work. I'm connected to my purpose. I'm enrolling people into my practice. I'm spending time with my family. You know, it's like, you're having fun. That's good. Yeah. You know, that's, yeah. that's what I live for. Like, that's the golden trophy for me. Yeah, I mean, before we started together, I mean, I was really to the point of I was trying to figure out how to get out of physical therapy. Yeah. You know, like I just I was like, I just can't I can't keep doing this. Like I've got to find something else, some other business, something I've got to find something else I can do that will give me more fulfillment. And not that I didn't like treating patients. I enjoyed it. But I think it got to the point to where. You can't focus your time on that. So the whole time you're treating patients, you're thinking about what else you need to be doing or what else, you know, and it just, I think that's what burns you out more than anything. I don't think any of us lose the love for, you know, actually helping people and treating patients. And it's the grind behind the scenes that while you're, you can't just do that. You're having to think about, all the other things at the same time. And it just becomes overwhelming. So there's two things I'd like to bring up. Number one, your pro, you know, I had a mentor of mine tell me your problems are going to be waiting for you on the other side of the fence too. Right. So like what happens is we grow this business, a business and what, and we, and we grow and things get complex the business starts to demand, there's a new boss that we got to beat, right? And we can't beat them because we don't know how to beat them. And so what we decide is, you know what? I'm on level three, right? I got to beat level three boss. You know what? I'm going to go over here and start back over on level one in this other industry. And then I'm going to go level two, level three, and boom, same boss. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so your problems are just going to be sitting there waiting for you. It's like, you have to beat this boss. Yeah. You know, and so if there's any, uh, any clarity or any uh, framework that you might get from that, that that's useful for me. The path is always through, not around. It's yeah. always through. And so the other thing is you mentioned that you were burnout mm -hmm. and you mentioned that you're treating patients, but you got all this other stuff kind of in the back of your head that you that's calling you and, and, and it's kind of pulling your attention. Right. Yeah. That is the first mm -hmm. sign that it's time for you to step away from treatment. Whenever you are working on somebody's piriformis with one hand and then on the other hand, you got a cell phone and you're checking your emails. <laughs> we all have done it. We've all done it. It's time it, at that point, what's happening is, your purpose, you are no longer aligned with your purpose. You are no longer aligned with your true purpose. There is a bigger purpose calling you and you're not committing to it. And people get burned out whenever their day-to-day -day routine, their day-to-day -day work is not aligned with their true purpose because it takes courage to go after it, right? So when you recognize like, no matter how scary it is, no matter, no matter if I don't know what the outcome is going to be, no matter if anybody tells me I'm stupid, I'm just going to go all in on what I really want to do. Even if it's scary, radical, weird, doesn't make sense, I'm going all in. 
and win that game. When we start winning that game, our life moves in the direction that we want. Yeah. Business starts growing, start making more money. Like everything moves, right? Start surrounding your people, yourself with people that want to help you. All right. So that's awesome, bro. So what I wrote down is, um, number one, get into coaching quick. Yes. Number two, we got to work on the vision, clarity on the vision. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's more clear on how to get to where you want to get to. It's having a vision, but then also working on what, what, what are the steps you need to take to get to that point? Yeah. Don't be lazy with the vision. Don't say, I want to put some systems in place. Okay. What systems, why, how, what's the product of that system? What are the, what do you need in place? How many people do you need to hire? A lot of things you got to figure out before you just start throwing blanket statements out. Right. Yeah. I think that's where I started. Even looking back, like when we first started, I was like, all right, I got to get more systems in place. But in my head, like I have no idea. Welcome to the club. Everybody (laughs) does. I didn't know what those systems were. I was like, I know I need it, but I don't know. (laughs) And now like, I mean, it's still a work in progress, but like I have a whole list of like, I know exactly what I'm going to, you know, I know what we need and what's going to make us as a company better versus just knowing that I need something. Mm -hmm. Build the company, then you can make some money not make some money so you can build the company. Right. And then the third thing was, um, you, I think that was it. That was pretty much it. Right. You mentioned, um, you just weren't really aligned with your purpose. Right. Yeah. You feel yourself being pulled out, you pulled to into something else. Like it's probably time for you to start spending more time there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That, you know, just taking action versus just, Thinking Um, about it. Yeah. Yeah. Cool, man. So last thing we're getting into 20 in the 20 Q4, right? So what types of, how has your vision expanded going into the rest of the year? And then like, have you started thinking about 2025, what that might could look like for you? Kind of what are some of the big things that are on your plate that, that, that excite you? Um, I think the biggest thing is developing more leadership roles within our organization as it is, um, which that shift has already started, but I'm kind of getting more clear on how that looks. Um, you know, like we did an annual strategic plan last year (laughs) And it was, and I think you even told me this, like, just start somewhere. It doesn't even matter. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just you need to start it. And I've already been thinking about that for this year. And it's going to, it's going to look completely different and complete. I mean, it's, it's going to have a lot more purpose this time than it did. There last you go. Time. You debrief it. You learn now, it's um, better. every year. It gets better. But then, um, so really kind of more leadership development within our, within our structure. And then my goal is 2025 is to, that's whenever we're going to start expanding as well. Start looking into the clinic number three. Yep. Yep. That's fun. It will be fun. That's fun, man. I'm, I'm on board. I think that's great. Yeah. That's the goal. All right, brother. Uh, there might, there's probably going to be some people who are inspired by your story. Uh-huh. and who are listening to this. I know you're on Facebook. You're in the Facebook group. So if people, would you mind if people like found you, his name's Kenny Holder, you can find him in DM, shoot him a DM, right? Yeah, I don't talk to anybody. Is there another, like, is there, like, how would other anybody else get in touch with you if they want, if they had any questions about, about uh, that or an email? Um, my email is Kenny, K-E-N-N-Y at EliteTherapyPT.com. Sounds like a winner, man. If anybody has any questions, holler at Kenny. Kenny, let's uh let's do this again in like a year and let's let's kind of let's see where we're at. It would probably be pretty interesting. Yeah. All right, brother. Yeah. Be good. I'll talk soon. All right. Thank you. I appreciate it.